What's going on guys? Killer6 back with another top 10 video for you and this time I'm taking a look at the top 10 Vault Hunters in Borderlands history. This list will include Borderlands 1, Borderlands 2, Borderlands the pre-sequel, and Borderlands 3 Vault Hunters. Now these are my personal picks, but as always let me know in the comment section down below how you would rank them and with that let's dive right into it. And number 10 is... Coming in at number 10 is Krieg. Now, obviously, Krieg is a fan favorite in the Borderlands series for a few reasons. His play style is completely different from all the other Vault Hunters in Borderlands 2, and using Release the Beast properly could make you nearly invincible. Now, you combine that with skills like Silence of Voices, which gave you a 12% chance to hit yourself in the face, and it's easy to see why people love this psycho. Krieg's melee skills were some of the best the franchise has ever seen, and his blood explosion skill could lead to some amazing damage. One of the most endearing things, however, about Krieg is what we know about his inner voice constantly struggle to keep him under control, and we saw that in the meat bicycle built for two featurette that had him and Maya in it. Now tell her thank you. Tell her that because of her, we might actually one day be able to act like a normal person again. I powdered my cockatiel for the ribcage slaughter. Huh. Close enough. Number nine! No, no, Gary, that, that's an upside down six! Who are you trying to fool? Number nine, speaking of Maya, one of the things that I enjoyed about playing Maya in Borderlands 2 was phase locking an enemy, then speeding around the room with her fleet skill, wiping out all the other enemies just to come back to the phase lock guy and kill them. Like, it was like I was making him watch all of his friends die before I finished him off. However, Maya has some of the worst capstone skills of any character in Borderlands, but her other skills make up for that. Kinetic reflection, the ability to res teammates from far, far away, cloud kill, chain reaction, and emulate amongst many other useful skills made Maya a powerful teammate. Now, if only she had phase locked Troy. Number eight! Coming in at number eight, Lilith. Now, I'll be honest, I've only done playthroughs on Borderlands 1 as Lilith, Brick, and Mordecai, but I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything with Roland. I mean, he's dead after all. But of those three, it's very obvious that Lilith is the strongest all-around option. Being able to phase walk out of danger, then pop up and phase strike an unsuspecting enemy for 800% melee damage is pretty satisfying. Now that said, Borderlands 1 skill trees are pretty boring in general and lack the depth that we're accustomed to in Borderlands 2, the pre-sequel in Borderlands 3. But Lilith is the OG Siren, one of the leaders of the Crimson Raiders and the Queen of the Lava Rising. You should probably speak to her. Number seven, uh, Gary, I swear, if you left the wrong sign one more time, just one more time. Number seven. Now, I know a lot of people might not like that I rank Amara ahead of two fan favorite sirens, but hear me out. Have you ever eliminated an entire screen of enemies with one shot using Maya or Lilith? Can Maya do three different phase abilities? Plus, Amara has a great melee sniper and run and gun potential just like zero from borderlands 2 using ties that bind you can use your phase grasp and turn it into a instant death for everybody in sight using phase cast you can launch an astral projection of yourself through an entire mob of enemies doing massive damage and using phase slam you can launch yourself great distances to smash down on a group of enemies saying that's pretty fun combine that with skills like personal space which gives huge damage increase the closer yard enemies remnant which is a death ball that tracks enemies and explodes them for millions of damage mindfulness that when at max stack makes Amara run as fast as a flash. Then she also has a better version of Maya's chain reaction in the skill Indiscriminate, which allows all of your shots to ricochet and do stupid amounts of damage to other enemies on the screen. And then there's Sustainment, which Amara uses to steal health from enemies with elemental weapons, allowing her to be nearly invincible as long as she's shooting her guns. Now top that off with two very good capstones in Avatar, which allows you to use your action skill twice before cooldown, and Forceful Expression, which gives passive elemental bonus for whatever action skill element you're using. Amara is super fun to play as and often makes you feel very OP, which is exactly what a Vault Hunter should feel like. And now for number six. Coming in at number six is Athena from the pre-sequel. Speaking of badass chicks, Athena was one of my all-time favorite playthroughs. Well, aside from the part where Janie Springs kept sniffing me. Who the frick is sniffing? Having a shield to block incoming damage, absorb it, and then use it against those enemies by throwing the shield, which can then ricochet between enemies, 
is extremely fun. It makes you feel like Captain America on crack. Combine that with her ability to stack up elemental damage and get ridiculous fire rate, skills like return fire offered substantial bullet reflection, storm weaving made it so when you swap weapons you gain storm weaving for nine whole seconds giving you increased fire rate and elemental effect chance as a tier one skill. Athena had a very fun gameplay loop with a very cool action skill. I only wish we had known more about her after the events of Borderlands 2. I know five ways to kill a guy with a sign, Gary. Five. Coming to number five, Salvador. Salvador is a vault hunter that needs very little introduction. His action skill is gun zerking, which allows him to dual wield any two weapons in the game. You want to use two rocket launchers? No problem. A pistol and a sniper? Go for it. On top of that, you could instantly regain 50% of your health just by triggering your action skill. Now, the question I'm sure to get is why is Salvador only number five in this list and not way higher? Well, while he is arguably one of the most powerful vault hunters of all time, most of his power comes via a weird gameplay mechanic glitch. For example, when you hold a weapon in your right hand, or your main hand as it's commonly referred to in the community, then whatever gun is in your off hand, or your left hand, will have its special abilities transferred to the main hand gun. So if you have a Lady Fist in your left hand, and an Unkempt Herald in your right hand, then the Herald will get 800% critical hit damage from the Lady Fist. This is further amplified with combinations like Orphan Maker and Lady Fist or the Pimpernel and the Heb Launcher, allowing you to do ridiculous things with damage. Now you combine that with skills like Inconceivable, No Kill Like Overkill, Money Shot, and suddenly Salvador is destroying raid bosses in seconds. Okay, here we are at number four. Coming in at number four is Moe's. Now, much like Salvador, Moe's is ultra powerful and capable of firing almost nonstop with the right setup. But unlike Salvador, Moe's accomplishes this with her actual skill tree and not via game mechanics working in wacky ways. Combine that with the fact that Moe's has Iron Bear, a mech that she can hop into and utilize for damage, safety, and recovery, and suddenly it's very easy to see why she's more functional than Salvador. Skills like Means of Destruction, Some for the Road, Redistribution, and Cloud of Lead gives Moe's multiple ways to shoot her guns nearly limitlessly, while other skills like Fire in the Skag Den, Short Fuse, and Torque Cross Promotion give her massive amounts of splash damage. All three of her capstones are exceptional. Forge gives you constant ammo regen for the currently equipped weapon. Short Fuse gives you additional explosions on targets that you shoot, which when paired with high fire rate weapons means you're going to do a ton of splash damage. And Tenacious Defense gives you back a portion of your shield when it depletes and gives you 30 seconds of 30% more gun damage. Moe's is, in my opinion, a better, more refined gun zerker in so many ways, other than she can't shoot two guns at the same time. Also, she's about a foot taller than Salvador. You know what they say about a third wheel? Well, here's number three. Coming in at number three, Timothy the Doppelganger. Now, this one will likely be seen by a lot of people who never played the pre-sequel, and they're going to think that I'm absolutely insane, but one of my absolute all-time favorite playthroughs from any of the Borderlands games was when I played Timothy the Doppelganger. There'll be a link down in the description for this playthrough if you want to go watch it in its entirety. Imagine triggering your kill skills just by moving. That's what Timothy the Doppelganger was able to do. You summon in your clones and then you just move away from them, which causes them to despawn and then respawn. And all of a sudden, all of your kill skills are triggered. Massive health regen, weapon damage, critical damage, and a Gunzerker-esque ability to not use ammo occasionally. This character was the OG Zane. Non-stop kill skills, non-stop fun to play. Adding to Timothy's cool factor is his appearance in Borderlands 3 in the first DLC where we learn more about him. And now I'm an even bigger fan of his. If you've never played the pre-sequel, you missed out on some very cool skill trees and very cool playable Vault Hunters. Chief among them, in my opinion, is Timothy the Doppelganger. And in second place! Coming in at number two, speaking of kill skills, Zane is the absolute master of kill skills. His kill skills are so good that if you combine the right combination of skills along with the Sea and Dead class mod, he basically becomes invincible. His kill skills grant weapon damage, movement speed, life steal, reload speed, fire rate, extra shot chance, and action skill damage. And with the recent buffs to his clone and his drone, you can literally send them into battle and watch them decimate hordes of enemies for you while you listen to Zayn quip about all sorts of hilarious things. Violence, speed, and momentum is what Zayn is all about, but he's also about some damage and hilarity. Zayn has it all, and he was my first Borderlands 3 character, so he's always going to hold a special place in my heart. Honorable mention. Honorable mentions go to Nisha the Lawbringer and Gage the Mechromancer. Now, Nisha was essentially Salvador 
door with auto aim and a weird relationship with handsome jack and gage was the lovable scamp who built her own death machine robot named death trap both offered very unique play styles and i had a really good time on both characters but they're just a little short of making my top 10. and finally here we are at number one finally coming in at number one zero the assassin now what makes zero the ultimate vault hunter is a combination of play styles that can be achieved with this character zero is arguably the most versatile melee character in the entire franchise one of the best snipers in the series and has the ability to utilize pretty much any weapon in borderlands 2. add to that a skill tree filled with amazing abilities like boar many must fall death blossom for kunai critical ascension two fang rising shot death mark ambush follow through execute and so many others it's easy to see why zero is so good at everything further cementing zero's spot at the top of this list is the cool factor zero is an assassin that can go into deception kill everybody on the screen and then say something in haiku like nothing just happened plus in borderlands 3 zero returns as an npc where he continues to be a badass helping you along the way zero is my first borderlands character ever and since i was late to the franchise starting on borderlands 2 when i saw that intro of the vault hunters on the train i knew right away the zero was perfect for me so that's my top 10 vault hunters in borderlands let me know what you think of my list and post a comment below tell me what your favorite vault hunter is and why if you enjoyed this video then be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more borderlands content thank you guys for watching take care